read Bill's notes word for word because he's brilliant. The Trojan War looms over the history of mankind. It appears to have occurred in the late Bronze Age, some eight centuries before Alexander the Great, and more than a thousand years before Julius Caesar. And yet the world knows more about this war than any war in history. We know the kings and the princes, the soldiers, their wives, their lovers, their children, their horses. <laughs> we know the gods they worshipped and the gods they disdained. And of course, we know the reason for the war. Thersites tells us, all the argument is a whore and a couple. <laughs> Ten years of vicious war and a civilization destroyed for the face that launched a thousand ships. Really? <laughs> no. Really? That's like saying the Archduke Ferdinand started World War I, or the Civil War was fought for states' rights. Does anyone remember the domino theory? Does anyone remember the main? He's not buying it. He's not impressed by the legend of Troy and the Greek heroes who besiege it. He sees greed, ego, revenge, politics, pettiness, lust, love, family, hurt, misunderstanding, fear, hope. He sees us, our aspirations, and our lives. I have said several times that Troilus and Cressida meet at the corner of war and sex. <laughs> but it could also be the corner of humanity and myth. The world remembers Troilus, Cressida, and her uncle Pandarus as the fool, the whore, and the pimp. They themselves consider that biographical possibility even as they make their vows to each other. They anticipate the People magazine version of their lives. But Shakespeare asks us to look closer. Look here. Here's a very young man who would rather love than fight and ends the play as the ultimate killing machine. Here's a young woman, her father a traitor now living with the Greeks, understandably afraid to admit she loves a Trojan prince. A girl thrown into the Greek camp like so much red meat. And here's an uncle trying to make the best of it, a man with no real power, bringing two young, inexperienced, desperate people together. <laughs> Troilus and Cressida is one of the problem plays. Oh, please, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem because it doesn't fit into any single genre of comedy, history, tragedy, etc. Like you sit down at the theater and say, well dear, what genre of Shakespeare are we seeing tonight? <laughs> it is a play that has no verified success before the 20th century. It is nothing if not modern in its refusal to believe in the heroic. A rich, beautiful city sits on a hill at the exact point where Europe and Asia meet. Wars, like real estate, are frequently just a matter of location, location, location. <laughs> a ragtag collection of scrappy island kingdoms are looking to expand. They're just looking for a logo, a brand, a theme song to start a war. Enter Helen of Troy. <laughs> At the heart of this story are two young people who believe that their youth and their love matters. Shakespeare reminds us that every single day, War obliterates that notion. Sorry, kids. I can't wait to get to ABT and start rehearsals for this messy, extraordinary play. And I can't wait to see you all. Love, Bill.